International Hydrographic Organization have released a new S100 framework, which is um, data standards designed to modernize navigation. S104 and S111 are data standards within that framework. S104 is the data standard for tidal information for surface navigation. S111 is the data standard for surface currents. Together, they provide much better interoperability of hydrographic data. The Port of London is the largest port by tonnage in the UK and one of the busiest. Therefore, our relationship with the UK Hydrographic Office is really important to ensure that mariners get the information and data they need to undertake their passages safely. UKHO is doing these sea trials because we know the S100 standards are coming and we need to understand the true customer value for S104 and S111 for everyone working in the marine environment. Specifically for the Port of London Authority, we wanted to understand whether the safety, economic and environmental benefits could be realised through the use with pilots and vessel traffic services. The specific objectives of the sea trial that the UKHO and PLA conducted together uh, were twofold in many respects. We were both testing the quality of the data and the models and comparing those to our current models and actual live data. And also we were looking at the interface of how that data is presented to the seafarer and how accessible that data was and whether it was displayed in such a way as was user-friendly and appropriate. We've been able to provide data that outperforms what is currently available for the users. The different way that the information is being provided by S100 helps them make better decisions when they're planning and executing their passages. Hopefully this is the start of the widespread adoption of S100 throughout the next couple of decades. The contribution is, uh, of the S100 standard is, is massive. It will enhance safety because uh, mariners will have access at more accurate uh, data and all the things that go hand in hand with safety. Let's not forget that uh, most of the time, uh, the nearest land uh, to the ship is under the ship. So we need to have good data. So it's really important that we still have accurate forecasting. The Thames barrier was opened in the 1980s. We have operate on very tight underkill clearances and uh, negative surge can significantly impact those undercoil clearances. With the surface currents product specification, S111, this is an overlay which can be overlaid on top of the navigational data to give you the tidal flow of the surface current. And this is important because it gives you the rate at which the tide is surging potentially, so that if you are navigating a vessel up a river and you've got four knots of tide coming towards you, you're going to need more engine power to get up that river and not find yourself sailing back out to sea. S104, the Tidal Water Levels product specification, allows us to present for the first time gridded sets of information of tidal heights across a large area. We've undertaken three phases of testing, initially with the deployment of instrumentation to measure the current speed and tidal heights in order to validate the forecast. We have then tested the product in vessel planning stages uh, in our VTS centre. And lastly, we're testing the product on board the ships and how that improves the pilot's situational awareness. The data set can provide three different advantages. Firstly, it can improve navigational safety by opening up restricted channels. It can offer significant advantages in terms of loading cargo. And this for a shipping company offers operational advantages in terms of um, being able to get in and out of berth more quickly and effectively loading more cargo. This offers significant benefits for the end user. The objective of these trials was to understand in a, a port context where the value in S104 forecast models and where the value in the S111 surface currents really lied for this stakeholder. And it, it really has helped our understanding of how we need to produce the data, but also the challenges in terms of running sea trials in this type of operational area. It will make a massive difference to have the same data on the ship and uh, in the hands of the pilots. 
at the moment, uh, we have information that the vessel doesn't have, which doesn't help for the master-pilot uh, relationship. By having the S-104 water level heights overlaid on top of S-102, the bathymetric surface, we will, in real time, be able to sort of see how much water is available in the water column and or sort of generate a, a safety contour that will evolve with the tidal heights. So this will uh, greatly aid um, sort of the safety of navigation. And 111 is definitely a situational awareness aid. So it will give the speed and direction of currents and the nice part about this data layer in the S100 stack is that the portrayal is defined and what that means is on whatever system the size and color of the arrows that represent the speed of the currents will always be the same it's like S104 it is derived from hydrodynamic forecast models. So again, it is tidal current information that is provided by a forecast as opposed to a prediction. So that will be more accurate. By being able to provide S100's data, the user is able to have a clearer understanding of the dynamic environment in which they're working. The user will be able to identify hazards to avoid groundings. The International Maritime Organisation has committed to achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 and the S100 standards can support that. By being able to identify favourable routes and utilise favourable currents, the mariner is able to reduce their fuel consumptions and therefore their greenhouse gas emissions. By being able to provide high density hydrographic data, we're able to open up the waterways and increase traffic into the tidally restricted ports. The key findings and outcomes from these trials were that the S104 and the S111 data is invaluable to the seafarer. Providing that greater clarity of data and information allows for the decision making and passage planning process to be refined and also it enables the pilots to take the ship more safely in a wider range of area, safe in the knowledge that you know, that data is accurate and up-to-date and timely. On completion of the trials, we conducted a deep dive to ensure that we had extracted all the learnings from the trials. We went through each of the test scenarios to understand the benefit to the user. The relationship between the UKHO and the Port of London Authority is really important. We're able to develop and uh, evolve these new technologies really quite swiftly and that will help with the rollout of these models and this data throughout the country and worldwide. So for me, the next steps really at the UKHO are taking the data sets that we've created and used in this port environment and conducting trials with other shipping companies to get some really valuable feedback from another user group on how these data sets can be used in different environments. <laughs>